This is 16 to 1, a podcast about education, teaching, and learning. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you situating? I'm I'm ready to go. Should I drink some more Sunny D and wait? No, I'm okay. here. It's 2022. We're here. We're oh ready. Oh my gosh. We're going. It's happening. Another year in the books. 2022? 2022. That makes me uncomfortable. Why? I don't want more. You don't want more years? <laughs> oh, anything no, with a 20... More. It's like that, yeah. 2020. 2020 part. decade is not for you. Well, this is like part three though, right? Part three, the twentying, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Oh well. <laughs> well. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in two weeks. See ya next time. <laughs> Goodbye. No, no we've, been, uh, we've been doing this for two years now. I know. We're taking a moment to pause and reflect, and we've only taken off four episodes. That's true. Four episodes for Christmas and Thanksgiving breaks uh-huh. in each year. In yeah. two years, I'm I'm proud of us. Yeah, we're, I am. We're good. We're good. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Yeah, it is. I don't realize how much work it is until I'm not doing it. And then I'm like, wow. Yeah. It's a big chunk of our weeks, but it yeah. is very rewarding because we get to learn new things while we're doing it. We That's do. what I like best about doing the pod. So so we're back. Yeah. It's 2022. It is. Should we do a little housekeeping and talk about what's coming up next? Yeah, we can. For the loyal listeners. We are celebrating our 50th. 50th episode. Episode. With a party. A party? T-shirts, cake. Oh balloons i didn't know about all of you're in charge details. of all of this oh thank you thank you this was your reminder no we are going to have our first guest yes for our 50th episode but risha allen is going to be on with us yes and risha is one of my dearest friends she is the only reason one of the only reasons i survived my first year of teaching mm. she is one of the best teachers i've ever seen in my entire life one of the best people I've ever met. I could, I'm could. i just so excited to get to talk to her. We are, um, we are big fans. So we are big stands of Russia. And hilariously enough, in the time that it took for us to like work this out with her and schedule it and figure out what episode and all of this, she managed to go and get TikTok famous. Yeah, she got TikTok famous. <laughs> so now I feel like we're... <laughs> yep. I think she knows better, but I'm still a little like... Well, <laughs> I guess this is good timing, but one of my favorite people on this earth, and I'm so excited to have a guest and to just talk with her and, and hear about her education. And we're finally doing a topic I've been wanting to do since the very beginning. Yeah. Probably a topic that was in our first five topics that it we came was. up with. Yeah. The topic we're, t- we're going to discuss banned books with Risha. She has some background in dealing with yeah. Banned books. So she's done a little bit of everything in her life, but she is truly one of the best educators I've ever met. So we're going to have her on. There's probably going to be a lot of bleeping. Um, <laughs> when we sent out notes, I was like, don't worry about censoring yourself. You can bleep and post <laughs> yeah. the, to keep us so, off the, the naughty lists. Yes. Of Apple. Uh, I don't know if people know that, but the reason why we bleep it is because you, you get a you know, you get tagged as being... It's like PG-13. Explicit, You're like- <laughs> right, right. You get tagged as you having get- explicit language if you leave them in, and we didn't want to close off the podcast to all kinds of audiences, since sure. it is educational. Yeah. Supposedly family-friendly most we of are, the time. Mostly. mostly. I'm just so excited. Yeah. I can barely contain myself. It's so, going yeah. to be truly hilarious. She's one of the funniest people I know, and it's just it's going to be a nice change of pace for us, I think. It is. Yep. Yeah. We're going to probably hopefully be doing some more guests having more guests on the show yeah in this new year it's kind of a new chapter of the pod for us we're trying to branch out and grow a little well and it's been something that chelsea has had to take on to figure out the logistics of it yeah to do it remotely especially because in russia's case she's in north dakota right and we were in ohio well that 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 doesn't really work for our schedules as much as i wish the 16 to 1 budget could just fly her here (laughs) or us to her the budget Uh, um yeah no yeah we do so it's been something you've had to sort out well we have a mobile recording rig but that's only for when we're going in person to some guests which i do think we have coming up 
as well but we also yeah we're I trying like... to figure out how to do remote interviews yeah. for the first time so we'll see how it it's goes exciting. So bear with us if the if the quality is a little strange or different next time next episode that's probably what you're hearing but i'm looking forward to the adventure of it so. and i feel like every time we do this i'm gonna be like these are my favorite people and it's because all of the people that we have considered having or like will have mm -hmm. are truly some of our most favorite people yeah and so it's exciting to share something that we love with people we love yeah and uh, that also happened to fit in the orbit for us of mm -hmm. education so this is 49 the next one is 50 and 50 is gonna be yep it's gonna be so much looking fun. forward to i'm it so lot. excited so that's coming up any other housekeeping any other anything we should be thinking about no no just Hope you had a good end of 2021 and had a yeah. happy new year and a good holiday season and all yep. of that. Go get that booster, you know, just... Yeah, keep an eye out because this Omicron As I'm like sniffling wave, and I'm like, yeah. is this it? This Omicron wave, we've talked about it, but pretty much everyone we know has now all gotten COVID at once, except for you. That's yep. me knocking on all of the yeah. wood that I can find because I haven't yet. Yeah, you have not. You've been spared. I was not spared. We talked about that last mm -hmm. episode, but all good now. And I have my taste and smell back and everything. So what a time to be alive. Phew. You know what, though? Heck 2021 for taking Betty White. OK. Yeah. The last day. What was that? Just like, a what? big F you. Why was that? <laughs> That was so dumb. I don't know, but it has given us but occasion to rewatch the Golden Girls, which it has, has been fun. But also, maybe Betty White was like, "We can't start a new year like this." So she just like to, you know, just is go it out worse with a bang. to end the year with it or to start a year with it? And I think she did the right thing. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say so. Oh uh, yeah, just gosh. Now when we watch Golden Girls, like, I'm like, <laughs> we, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, heck, 2021. Yeah, it's over. It's done with. I do hate that 2022 is is a year without Betty White, but. Yeah. Be. I'm looking forward to this year though. We've got we've got golden things going on. The new year in a, in a way that is related to what we're about to talk about. The new year often comes as a time where people make resolutions and sometimes those resolutions yeah, are along the lines leave of, a bad taste in my mouth sometimes yeah i know people are either very firmly pro or very firmly anti-resolution I, I think an end of a year is a good time to just sort of reassess reflect better word yeah i would probably have chosen to reflect had i thought about it anymore but no i mean no i think it's just it's a good time to be like what what did i do and how do i feel mm -hmm. and if i don't like it what do i you know i think that's i think it's a good time for that we have friends who uh once a year do that with regard to their relationship do you remember this we have we have friends in maryland who every year they have a sit down and they just sort of do like a state of the relationship conversation <laughs> Yes. Which I think is really cute because I, I would never have the discipline to just be like, it's kind of like they like, re up it for yeah. another year. Yeah, each yeah, year. yeah, yeah. I, I mean, this now. no, it's not, it's not, and it doesn't come from like a place of tension or bad things. No, they it's just, just like how things to stay healthy and they just check in with one another every year. And I think it's cute. So yeah. We're doing that Maybe with our own that. lives. Yeah. With yourself. Yeah. With your loved ones. We're going to talk a little bit more about like what some of the things we're focusing on. Mm hmm. But I, I do think a, a new year is a is a great opportunity to start at least fresh in the mind of like, OK, if I didn't, then I can't now. Yeah. And I think that's good. Yeah. And you shouldn't feel bad about what didn't happen. True. You can only just then say, OK, well, this year. And if not this year, you could be like the Browns <laughs> and just keep saying every year is your year. I mean, it's I think. It's but just, I'm being serious, though. Like, I'm not trying to be a jerk about it. I just mean we're human. Sure. And. Did I think 2021 was going to go the way that it did? No. I had a very different vision of it. Yeah, I think with regard to but resolutions... But that doesn't mean I failed. Right. With regard to resolutions right now, it's a kind of tough time because we're all burnt out on a global pandemic. So we're, we all have a little less energy to bring to the table than usual, I yes. think, with regard to these things. I still think it's like, you know, it's not a bad thing to just take an opportunity to look and say, hmm, what do I want my goals yeah. for myself to be, you know? And it's... Yeah, I, I think that's like where I get iffy about it. I just, I don't like failing. No one likes to fail. So you don't want to get to the end of the year and feel like it wasn't successful. So I'm working on that this year. You're working on being less critical about your own resolutions. That's Except for resolution. today, I already fell apart once. So oh, it's fine. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, it's okay. So this topic, yes. as you already let into it, yes. is all about self-education, yes. which fits nicely. Except for when I read it, I opened the notes, I did what I could do with my homework, and then I read the topic from the big, the big spreadsheet, and then I went, uh-huh, and I closed it. 
because you didn't it, uh it, it didn't was, make sense as a prompt it was a chelsea idea in my head i knew you already knew exactly what i have it was. to do some translating when i write down thoughts into like so how what is this it? actually well so go ahead so this is your I moment kinda, yeah i just wanted to so self-education self-teaching autodidacticism as you might a big no, fancy word for that. that self-teaching has been a a very big part of my life for a number of reasons and as people who are interested in learning and lifelong learning you know this is something that we think about and talk about and you know deal with in our day-to-day lives i would say so i kind of just wanted to put a little bit of structure around it this is probably going to be a somewhat shorter episode because it's not you know there isn't a whole lot of established scholarly mm-hmm. work on this kind on this concept i think i mean we were trying to do some research and i was you know people have opinions about self-teaching and self-learning but mm-hmm. i don't know that it's necessarily a huge area of focus it's more like things that are adjacent to self-education yeah. get some attention so like you know critical thinking skills and mm-hmm. discipline and scheduling and rewards and goal structures and education sure. and stuff like that so all of those things are they're related to education generally but also to self-teaching but so since it is a brand new year and it is a season of resolutions uh, because people often make resolutions to learn new things well, we just figured it'd be a good time to talk about yeah how to teach yourself so a lot of learning based resolutions you know some of us might be like oh i'm going to take a spanish class or oh i'm going to whatever mm-hmm. but for those of us who don't have time for those formal structures of education self-learning you know we're kind of on our own for the most part that's part of the whole yeah. that's part of the whole question and problem of self-education so it's uh it's a big theme in my life, as I mentioned, because I am yeah mostly self-taught with my day job. So mm-hmm. I do computer science, web development stuff in general. And yeah, I don't have any formal background mm-hmm. in, in any of that. Uh, we've talked before, but my formal education was in like philosophy, liberal arts for undergrad, and then philosophy and education in grad school. So that has nothing to do... <laughs> Well, I shouldn't huh. say nothing. It has a lot to do, but it, it in terms of what you might think of as formal well, certifications yeah. for that kind of work, it's not really. You're truly like self-taught in ways that most people I know are not. Like your your actual, <laughs> like the fact that your entire career right now at this point in your life is supported by everything that you taught yourself is pretty wild to me. Yeah, like it, it's so impressive. Thank you. Like I can, I appreciate that. You know. Like, when when you were talking about this, I was like, oh, God, have I ever taught myself anything? And then I realized that I do a lot of learning, mm-hmm. but is it self-taught? Like, I don't know. It's, like, one of those weird things that I was like, okay, but is this how to be self-taught, or am I just, like, watching a YouTube video and they're teaching me? That's where I got right. caught. <laughs> so I think, I think the border... Is that yeah. stupid? <laughs> no, no, no. I think the border around it is a little squishy, because especially now, with everything available on the internet... Do you really consider it self-teaching if there's a yeah. voice on the other end yeah. of the YouTube app telling you how to do something? Exactly. I, I think that in a kind of traditional definition of autodidacticism, it usually is just like education that you do on your own outside of the context of like a third party. So like a teacher or an institution Ooh, okay. of learning. So not like a formal education. Sort yeah. Of. So okay. it, even though you have that voice or that creator, that content creator helping you navigate this new thing that you're learning, if you're watching a YouTube video, even though there is that other voice there, it's still a self-initiated thing that happens outside of yeah. the structure of formal. Like nobody's asking you to do this. Sure, nobody's holding you accountable me. for doing it. Nobody can check your work to know, which is a challenge that's of self-learning. where I miss. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's a lot of, um, it was kind of funny when I was looking up statistics for this. I don't, I don't know if you've heard of Stack Overflow, but it's a website where... I have because of you. Okay. I mean, um, <laughs> yeah. previous of five years ago, I would have been like... Sure. Oh. It's a website where people go to post computer programming related questions. Again, for the computer sciences, this is kind of a big deal. But there's this 2016 Stack Overflow poll uh, reported (laughs) that due to the rise of this self-education in technology, that at that time, 69% of software developers appeared to be self-taught, which I did want to note is kind of funny because if you're taking a poll on Stack Overflow, you're likely to be... (laughs) You, you go on Stack Overflow because you're trying to teach yourself something. So right, users of Stack Overflow, right. Sure. Users of Stack Overflow are it's, probably more often that. than not going to be self. So it's sort of a self-selecting yeah. statistic, a little bit biased in that way. Yeah. But 
But I would say that at least among my peers who work in technology, a lot of them are self-taught. A lot of them are. Yeah. So I don't know. If the, I don't really know if this is something unique to technology, if it's something unique to just the nature of the internet or whatever it is. But self-teaching and self-learning is very big in in my mm-hmm. field. I think that's true for um, technology for sure. Yeah. And I think that it looks possibly a little bit different in the context of your career. So we don't mm-hmm. think of teachers, yeah. you, you know, teachers need to have certifications. They need to pass tests. They need to do all this stuff in a, in a formal structure. They're required to do it to hold the jobs that they hold. But I would say that there is a great deal of ongoing self-directed learning that teachers have to engage mm-hmm. in to there is. latch on to new materials well, new, new content new methodologies new ways of bringing classroom learning live yeah like when you're talking about stack overflow like that sounds like me going to teachers pay teachers or to some other content website to get ideas or thoughts about okay like i know i want to teach an argumentative what's the best way to teach claims and counterclaims like even though i was you know i have a formal education and education it wasn't like at any point they're like, this is how you teach this. Mm-hmm. Like you, that's like what the teacher has to work out on their own. So you talking about Stack Overflow is exactly like what I would do to go see a unit plan mm-hmm. or to go find a rubric of, a, you know, like that kind of thing. So it, it does happen. Right. I mean, it's definitely that way because I've over time, like I just started my one of my biggest units today, which is my Holocaust unit. And one of the things I've talked about is how much it's changed since I started teaching the Holocaust mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and how the bones are there but like all of the the parts are new Mm -hmm. and so and it's just because i've kept learning from teaching it sure how to do it better right which is exactly what you're describing in your job is that you've taught yourself this but now you go here for this kind of support to do you know right further it right yep it's not as weird but it does feel weird to be like formally trained in my profession Mm -hmm. and be like am i actually self-taught in the imposter syndrome yeah. about being self-taught oh yeah exactly yeah. well what are what are some other things outside of your job that you know, that you've well i made a yourself? comment in the notes that was like okay so well first of all one of them is procreate and procreate yeah procreate the, is an app on my yeah. ipad and i use my apple pencil and it can draw and it can do really cool stuff and i basically bought an ipad because i got tired of watching tiktoks of people playing on procreate and i wanted to do it myself Mm -hmm. so here i am Mm -hmm. i've taught myself enough to like do stuff with it i actually use it to make yearbook pages (laughs) i do a lot of my backgrounds and stuff on the ipad that's cool and then i upload them and yeah so that's been kind of cool so i've been self-taught but also tiktok Mm -hmm. yeah but the other one i had listed was like how to make my yearbook like i've been this is my ninth yearbook and I've had a little bit of guidance on it, but it's definitely been here as a website. Have fun. Mm-hmm. So I have had to learn how to do it, but I also, I noted, like, this is how I was feeling when I was writing it, that I felt like I'd been smacked in the face with the whole, like, if you can do and if you can't teach. <laughs> and it was, like, the moment where I was like, I don't know, can I? I guess I can. I mean, I do, but, like, <laughs> I went mm-hmm. back and forth so many times. I guess the last couple of things... I have taught myself a lot of stuff for Photoshop. You've helped me a lot with that, too. But I've also tried to understand a little bit more. I mean, like, you've taught me how to do, like, the WordPress posts and things like that. So I have learned some of those things along with it. But doing this podcast has taught me a lot and made me learn a lot. Like, I've had to read a bunch about, like, how to schedule posts right. and what kind of size they have to be. And Yeah, I've learned like, a lot about recording equipment and sound production yeah. and mastering. And, I mean, I still have a very long way to go on that because i'm still just sort of stumbling yeah. through uh, yeah and i feel that yeah. way about like the social media like it's kind of fallen off and that was on me because we were on break but that's something i'm like kind of hoping to figure out how to focus on more easily and to figure out like what what makes a post worthwhile like i don't know i'm still figuring it out that all seems very mysterious to me like it is how to do social and media I've, and i've read you know what i could about it i don't know it it feels kind of like you're searching for a, a needle in a haystack mm-hmm. and that you might be doing the right things but the algorithm just won't hit That's yeah kind of- i'm i'm always kind of in awe of social media managers and content producers I just like People who know how to work the algorithms, I'm just like, that's a black box and I have no idea what goes in and what comes out and how it works. And because like when we started, all of the recommendations where you add hashtags as comments, that's Mm -hmm. what I do. Mm -hmm. But now all of the people that I follow who are content creators 
do as per their post. So I'm going to switch and go back and see. But anyways, those are some things I'm sort of self-taught, sort of you have taught. Interesting. interesting. And just a little bit, you know, I'm sure there's more. Like you and I have watched YouTube videos on like the sump pumps or you yes. and I mean like I've the mower or just like anything related stuff. to like mechanical engineering. Yeah. Like, what <laughs> we've taught ourselves how to fix Oh, well, I you enjoy have, teaching I do not myself fix. how to fix things that break. Yeah, so, like, you... I mean, I support you. I like cold the flashlight. Like, I do like but, tinkering. But I've had to, you know, watch some of these videos just to be like, okay, is this... Like, I've, I found my lawnmower, like, my own push mower on a YouTube video. Some dad, like, flipping it over and, you know, like, when the thing got stuck. Like, so I had done some of that stuff. And we have able... We've, we've been able to save ourselves some money with those mm-hmm. things for sure. Mm-hmm. So I suppose I'm a little bit self-taught in those ways. But it's literally because I'm too cheap to do anything else. Mm-hmm. We can change the wipers on the car because i'm i got tired of knowledge that. to work and like i learned with my last car how to change the the bulbs on it because i got so tired of paying the headlights yes i uh, got so tired of those things going out because uh-huh. there was just like a fluke with that car that they just went out really often oh i didn't know that That's yeah and i would like just hit a bump and then go out and so th- that was just one of those things that i was finally like i'm tired of it and i mm-hmm. taught myself how to do it like you know yeah so yeah. I guess I have done a few things. Yeah, sure. Anything else for you other than your entire career <laughs> and everything that you fix everywhere? I mean, I, so I like to make stuff, art, like and crap. You taught yourself that? Yeah, yeah. I like 3D printing. I've You've taught yourself gotten that? into that. But Candles? Candle making, yeah. I sound like a crazy person just you flitting are... from project to project, but I am, so it's fine. Is that uh, ADHD? I taught myself like <laughs> guitar okay and, you know other music stuff and like musical composition yeah. and recording and producing and stuff yeah like you're that. truly like the most well-rounded person I've those ever are like met. hobbies that i have there you know i really love making music so mm-hmm. it was easy for me to want to learn about those things because those are passions of mine but like even what you've taught yourself like with the cricket is just like mind-blowing to me because i'm so overwhelmed by that thing because mm-hmm. it's just such a bad design for how to actually make it do what it needs yeah. to do. The thing she's talking about is the, the is a primarily a vinyl cutter, but yeah. it's called a Cricut, and it's a machine that is kind of like a baby version of a CNC router, sort of, sort of, kind of. But you like carve things out of things. But I mean, you've done like leather on there. You've done cards. You've done t shirt Like you've truly done all this cool stuff. And I really thought I was gonna like take to that thing, and I'm just not smart enough. So way to go. Well, the you. program is very difficult to use and not user-friendly so that's another obstacle towards self-directed learning is when the thing that you're trying to learn if it's not super intuitive i mean i think photoshop is kind of the same way too if what you're trying to learn involves software and that Mm -hmm. software is not developed to be very friendly to beginners then that's that is challenging Mm -hmm. and it can be really frustrating and it's easy to learn that's the thing about the cricket it's so frustrating to me and because every time it messes up it's money right procreate or sorry uh well procreate but also photoshop those aren't as stressful to me because it's just like undo like it's a very like reasonable mistake and i don't mind it yeah the cricket i'm like vinyl is expensive please don't you know yeah yeah i i do think that that can contribute to frustrations in self-teaching scenarios is when Mm -hmm. when something goes wrong it makes you less interested in wanting to keep that's definitely that's definitely my issue yeah and when the feedback or, or sorry when the uh when the mistake you make costs you money, that that's even worse. I would yeah. say. I would no, agree that's with that, that's but. exactly where my frustration comes from with yeah. that thing. Well, just kind of in general, I've got a list of some famous self-taught mm-hmm. people, which I think is pretty interesting here. And I do just want to note before we get onto this list because it's it is pretty fascinating. I would say that up until relatively recently, in the grand scheme of of history formal education we think of everyone as having at least some formal education now because in our country in the modern world everyone's required to uh, Mm -hmm. participate in a certain level of schooling Mm -hmm. right we all need to graduate from high school some of us will go on to college those are relatively recent achievements in the Mm -hmm. area of education because education very much used to be reserved for those who could afford to pay for education so it was Formal education was very much closed off to a large portion of the population. So this list of famous autodidacts that I have here, perhaps these people... Are they showing some privilege? (laughs) Well, yes. Is that that your prophecy? That is true. That is true. I guess I would also just say that some of this might blow our minds a little bit, but it might actually be more common for people throughout history Mm -hmm. to have been self-taught just because fewer people had former contexts, formal contexts for education. I mean, who do you learn from if you're the one creating it? 
Right. Mm. So that's something to keep in mind. And the other thing to keep in mind is that the internet has totally revolutionized pathways toward Mm self-learning. It hasn't necessarily revolutionized self-learning because just having the content out there to consume doth not make self-teaching. There's, there are all kinds of barriers. Gatekeeping? Yeah. Well, we'll talk about some of that. I'm just kidding. No, we'll talk about some of the, okay. the barriers that are up. But so let's just, tell me about some of these uh, yeah. authors on this list. I have some questions I'd like to okay. follow up with. Okay, but so, go ahead. Yeah, the first one, uh, we, we're going to talk about authors, entertainers, inventors, and then like scientists, historians, and educators at the end. But yeah, the authors on this list. Now, some of these people probably had some formal training, but a lot of them are self-taught in significant ways, let's just say. So there's a bit of a blurry line around huh. some of it, but... Let's go. Authors. Uh, Georges-Louis Borges. Uh, Borges is a really interesting fiction writer. Don't Some of my favorite is. short stories of all time are by Borges. Actually. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm interested. Read him in college. Um, Eugene O'Neill. We know him. Playwright. William Blake. Oh, boy. Charles Dickens. Oh, boy. Joseph Conrad. William oh, okay. Okay. Conrad upsets me. Conrad is one of, is regarded as one of the best English language fiction writers that of all time. That explains everything about Heart of Darkness. The fact that he taught himself. Yeah, he taught himself. And, and English is not his native language, which is always the kind of fascinating... Yeah. I don't know why, but I don't remember learning. I probably did, but I don't remember learning that Conrad's native language was not English when we read Heart of Darkness in mm, high school. But I, I do not remember that either. But I, I, we read it in college, and they were like, oh, by the way, did you know that this English was not his native language? And I was like, oh. That checks out. That's a very different story. I am surprised by William Faulkner being Faulkner? on this list. I love William Faulkner. Weird dude. Also very <sighs> groundbreaking. I mean, I mean, his perspectives in writing is some of the most it, just it's interesting. deeply unsettling to me. And oh, which I is not to it. say that I don't enjoy it. I enjoy it, but the first couple of things I read by Faulkner, I was just like, I am squirming in my skin. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. oh I read As I Lay Dying and it like changed my life. Yeah. It changed it's everything great. I thought it's a book just, could be. I didn't know a book could be that. It creeps me out. Yeah, it creeps fair. me out. Oh, it's like well, yeah. scary, kind of. Oh, okay. I don't know. Okay. I just, yeah, it's good fiction, but it's yeah. just, it's very unsettling. So. Hemingway? Yeah, Ernest Hemingway. I'm surprised by that. And George Orwell. Alcohol is a strong thing, you know? <laughs> I mean, that was Alcohol his whole thing, the right? Best I'll get drunk and I'll write, and that was kind of his approach. Uh, yes. Yes. That, he has a quote that literally says that. I would believe that. It was like write drunk, edit sober or something like that. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah, isn't that him? I think that, that is. That has to be him. Sounds right. Sounds okay. Like so the entertainers, I love this list. You yeah, did this a great is, job. This is a you list. Eddie Van Halen. Uh-huh. Yes. Frank Zappa, David Bowie, Hendrix. Jimmy Don't think Hendrix. I knew that. Kirk Cobain and Dave Grohl, of course, but they would have had each other. Mm-hmm. Um, Bruce Springsteen, Neil Peart. I also think Getty Lee from Rush was self-taught from what I remember of Probably. his story probably so inventors ah yes inventors now okay so this the is the first one well here's the thing so inventors and the first one was leonardo da vinci now he had formal training in the cat like cast system as an artist he basically had training in creating fine art from what we could tell but he did not have training in you know being an inventor and a botanist and a botanist <laughs> yeah he was among other things a botanist and he was interested in anatomy i wonder and- I, I'm kind of getting a polymath. Some, I think Thomas Jefferson would have to go on here. He probably was on here. I didn't include every single person. No, he I just struck me because he would have been the same way. Uh huh. In that sort of learning. Sure, sure. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, it's okay. So Leonardo da Vinci, a rather famous polymath. Thomas Edison, Nikola Tesla, Henry Ford. Uh, he did not attend college. I knew that. Yeah. And then scientists and historians and educators. We have uh, Blaise Pascal, Galileo Galilei, hmm. Michael Faraday, Benjamin Franklin, Ugh. Buckminster Fuller, Wait. Steve Irwin. I can't believe you put that on here. He's self-taught. He learned most of what he knows about animals and animal handling from his dad and just teaching himself, apparently. About alligators? Alligators. Crikey. Uh, and Steve Jobs, who is a famous, mm-hmm. rather famous college dropout. All of those people, just some very famous examples, yeah. but all of them were self-taught in at least some important way to that led their to historical sure. impact, you know? So that makes me feel better about my uh, my hopes and dreams of being self-taught. I could be Da Vinci. Yeah. You we could right. all be Da Vinci. <laughs> Couldn't we all? We all just this need also, some Medici's like, now. Yeah. 
It's pretty cool. It, it makes me feel more hopeful for sure. Because at first I was like, I don't know anything. To me, some of the more contemporary examples are more helpful because I can understand better how somebody like Steve Jobs could be self-taught. Because especially when you work in technology, you realize that the, the things you're working with, there's no template a lot of the time. Except for like, Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. A good template for a lot of things. There's no there's no real template for a lot of mm -hmm. innovation and for a lot of learning um, so now what other challenges come with that then uh with self-teaching mm -hmm. yeah so I, I found some research around this and i think a lot of this is fairly easily understood and kind of straightforward and probably like, something we already kind of mentioned yeah i'm sure that we've mentioned a lot of these things in various episodes not even just this one but yeah there are a couple of researchers here we'll have a link to the article but it's like kirshner and marion Bohr, it looks like are their names couple of people writing about self-directed learning, self-teaching. They point Ooh, the education loves that though. I yes. We true. love self-directed learning. We sure do. <laughs> they point out that giving learners more control isn't always a good thing necessarily. So there are three problems with opening up learning to be self-directed and that's that novice learners, so people who are just starting out, and I felt this way too when I started my career in technology, but novice learners don't always know enough about the subject they're trying to learn to make effective choices about what to learn next mm. so like you don't understand maybe the the proper next step or something because you don't know the grade. right okay I get one that. of the most frequent questions that i see now that i'm you know several years into my web development career people who are just starting out they'll go into forums and they're looking for help and they're like what technology stack should i learn like they ask the question they're trying to figure out where the heck do I start? What do I even do? Because there's so many options. Mm -hmm. There's so many technologies out there available. There's so many things to learn. And it's just completely overwhelming mm -hmm. to even start to sort through it. So a lot of times the beginner questions that you get in some of these spaces are just like, what do I even learn? And then you'll have people responding like, well, you don't, it doesn't really matter what particular thing you learn as long as you think about if you wanted to make something go learn whatever tech stack would help you make that thing. Mm -hmm. But that's another thing that they don't really know the answer to. So it's like, like what do you want to make? It kind of you... is the right answer, but it's also not necessarily helpful. the most helpful answer for novice learners. Yeah. So that's one challenge. Um, another challenge is that beginners and self teachers, you know, self teaching people, they tend to practice more of what they like or are good at instead of stretching themselves to new challenges. I'm very guilty of this when it comes to playing the piano, which is another thing that I do. I always just want to play the things that I enjoy playing and I'm relatively good at playing over and over and over again instead of practicing the way that I should to get better. Mm -hmm. I just, and I don't play very, very often. So the spare times that I do play, I, I'm just going back mm -hmm. to my old favorites over and over again. And I know that I'm, I know that that's bad for, you know, creating paths in the brain is mm -hmm. i think how my grandmother would explain this to me when i was a kid and not doing my piano lessons very well she'd be like <laughs> okay well the more you practice this thing wrong the more difficult it's going to be to learn it right mm -hmm. at some point so not only do i do that but i also just don't really stretch beyond what i know what so i do with. need to get better at that i'm going to commit to learning new things in okay. the piano playing realm and then the other challenge is that there's too much choice. That's mm -hmm. pretty much what we were just saying about not knowing what to learn next. There's just so much out there. An overwhelming amount of hours and days and years and probably millennia worth of content out there to consume now, especially on the internet. And not knowing where you want to go next in your learning journey and not knowing about not being able to assess the quality of the learning material that you're looking at, you know, all kinds of different challenges come up because it's, it's very difficult to know how well a YouTube video is teaching you if you don't know enough about the subject. Right. To, you so know, you can't even judge it as like a good, yeah. Right, right. So there aren't the checks and balances present that sometimes are more likely to exist in formal education settings. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Hmm. All right. So one more thing real quick from this same article by those uh, scholars just addressing that a lot of people want to when they're teaching themselves something they want to control how they learn i've talked with my sister about this because she and i have different approaches to self-learning and she's like you know what i just don't have the discipline and the structure to like sit down and commit myself to like an online course or something and i think that that's true of a lot of people they they wish that they could make their brains work like that but for whatever reason they just don't and i think part of it is 
skill that you can practice, but part of it is the tools that you've grown up with and Mm -hmm. been given and been exposed to in childhood and all kinds of different factors can impact this. But I think that what is common among a lot of autonomous learners and autodidacts, they they need support and direction and they tend to benefit from learning in communities. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's what that's what these scholars are saying too. That's they're saying we have classes and curriculum, you know, curricula and development plans and coaches and mentors and all of these support structures around learning because people benefit from learning Having in community. Yeah. And, you know, that's why things like the gamification of learning. So we have like leaderboards and mm-hmm. points and all of this kind of stuff. They're very common in online learning environments because that provides some measure of external motivation oh, and, and like structure and, right yeah right so it's like a feedback thing and also it can provide sort of social tools you know when you can compete against your friends to try mm-hmm. to learn the most or whatever it is that helps people who need some of this more social oriented structure yeah. around self-learning well and it's just like we have we know people who all have apple watches mm-hmm. and they've all shared their apple watch data with each other and so that's like what motivates each of them to want to go work out or to be active or something. Ah, and it's because health, they're getting the notifications related data. of what the other people are yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you and I have even talked about this with regard yeah. to exercise, where like we both know that we need accountability buddies in mm-hmm. order to make fitness related commitments. Right. I so I this is just do. like that though. Yeah. Like what you're describing for are sure. Those exact same things. Mm-hmm. So it's. I mean. I'm far more likely to do something if I'm not doing it alone. And that's exactly the case with this. Yep, exactly. Accountability buddy is important. Learning about something you're passionate about is very important. That seems important. If you're bored with what you're learning, I mean, you know, this is pretty, probably pretty common for you being a public school teacher. Kids are just like, I don't care about this. It's boring. They don't want to learn. That can happen. So it's it's true. Oh, of, I, but it's true of everyone. If you're bored to tears, yeah, and especially if you to. have the opportunity to learn whatever you want, and this isn't something that you're required to do, spend time learning something you're passionate about. Yeah. And you might guess wrong. You might guess that learning this thing is going to be your passion, but it turns out you mm-hmm. start and it isn't. So you don't have to think of that as a failure. You can think of that as, oh, hey, I discovered that this thing that I thought mm-hmm. was for me is not for me and that's yep. okay yeah the other final tip that i had at least from my own journey of self-learning was that if you are inclined to write at all turning something that you've learned into a blog post is very good for committing it to memory at least for me so this is why we do things like take quizzes and tests and write essays it's because part of learning is retaining that information in the long term converting it to something that's going to be useful for the rest of your life. And for me, I do these tech things and I spend hours Googling how to do something. And then I realized that I was kind of forgetting and they're often things that I need to do more than once. Mm -hmm. So I started writing every time I learned how to do a new thing or like build something with a new technology or set up a new environment, I started turning it into a blog post. So now my personal work blog is something that I can Use go back yourself. and reread because yeah. it's very useful for me and i Reteach remember yourself it. yeah you taught yourself but i also just remember it more than i would if mm-hmm. i didn't turn it into a post so anytime no, I think you, that's good i just think it's a really good habit to be in to just do a really short write-up about how your learning process sure. how you learned it what you learned um yeah. best ways like mistakes to avoid things like that it's a really good mm-hmm. way to turn self-learning into you yeah. know something memorable for yourself i agree that is a neat approach. Yep. I mean, that's not that much different. Like, I'll leave myself notes at the end of units when I know I'm going to come back to them next year. Like, I opened a binder yesterday to start prepping, and it literally said it was like, you have to... I, I think the note was something about, like, getting rid of three questions on the test because they were horrible. But I left myself that note last year because I knew it was bad. I didn't change it then. But then yesterday when I opened it, I was like, oh, way to go, past Katie. You're looking out for this, Katie. So... It's just like that, yeah. what you're describing, because yep. I wouldn't have remembered that that test was in bad shape until I wrote myself a note about it. Right. So some resources that mostly Chelsea came up with, but that we came up with, <laughs> that we like to learn just from. because I've used almost all of these. Yeah. For it. So, so. Um, one of them is a podcast. It's a little known thing. <laughs> This little known um, thing called podcasting. You might be listening to one if you've heard me say that word, but... I have learned so much from podcasts. I have too. So I would say it's probably my main form of ongoing, sort of like as a habit. Yes. I'll teach myself other things I need to learn on an as-needed basis, mm-hmm. but 
for just ongoing all the time in the background kind of learning and enrichment podcasts are the way to go i love you know you and i will be out and about and i'm like hey did you know this thing about the Mm -hmm. i'll talk about like sand a lot from my (laughs) you do love to point out concrete (laughs) concrete the production of concrete requires massive amounts of sand and the world is running out of sand and we're mining it from shorelines all across the world and shorelines are disappearing and sand helps environments stay together and it's just bad but anyway i learned all of that from uh 99 invisible never felt the same about sand i've never felt the same way about concrete and buildings and abandoned yeah. strip malls and it makes me uh very you do depressed. hate abandoned strip malls. abandoned strip malls are like the worst blight um, anyway podcast great for learning yeah free code camp which is a website where you can learn the code yep it's a nonprofit. it's where a lot of people go to start teaching themselves how to code especially mm-hmm. very very beginner kind mm-hmm. of people it's a really good course for that Masterclass, which we've watched some cool stuff on Masterclass. Mm-hmm. do we have that still yeah we do it's kind of expensive so this one is you know you got to keep in mind that a lot of these things cost you have money. to watch it to get your money out of it for you sure you, you have do. to watch it a while yes but it is fascinating so i've we watched some of, we need to finish it but the chris hadfield talking about space flight that was really interesting. interesting so like an astronaut mm-hmm. is talking to you about space flight i've watched aaron sorkin on screenwriting which oh, i yeah. think is really interesting mm-hmm. there are a couple other ones that, oh i did one on um game design yeah oh yeah um, anyway so but, masterclass yeah. youtube which oh, is yeah. up there for me probably is one of my favorites blogs which you talked about mm-hmm. local public libraries making the the comeback as always i mean as being a place to go and learn because they offer all kinds of classes and things right. like that that you could but also they just have resources i um, even used the local public library to research for this episode because i went you can a lot of times they'll give you access to scholarly journals that's usually you know those things are usually behind pay, paywalls but you can often get access to at least some of that stuff through school. a subscription from your local public library so we've definitely used that a lot and then I threw on uh, TikTok because yeah. I, I have done a lot of learning there. And I also threw on TED Talks because mm-hmm. that's like my master class. I watch so many TED Talks. Mm-hmm. It is something I consume constantly. Mm-hmm. And I have heard incredible stories from incredible people. Like it's just, it's really been a great thing that I've used in my classroom. Mm-hmm. And so TED Talks are very high on my list of, of learning. Yeah. I had, um, I had one final example on here and this is kind of cool. There aren't a whole lot of these around here that I know of, but there are, when, when I lived in Maryland, there was uh, this thing that was kind of like a tool library, but it was a it was called Annapolis Makerspace, and we should put a link to it because it's kind of a cool if you're in that area. But a acquaintance of mine from the web development world actually started this thing, but it's basically a tool library. And tool libraries are things that you, so this is a nonprofit, but they have you have a subscription, so you pay a certain amount of money every month, but you have access to a really interesting set of tools that are often probably way more expensive than most people could be able to afford on their own. Mm -hmm. So it's like everybody chips in with their membership costs and you can purchase bigger tools like laser engravers and CNC Mm -hmm. routers and like stuff that is expensive, like 3D printers and Mm -hmm. just all of that kind of stuff. Things you wouldn't normally just like have. Right. That you wouldn't probably have on your own unless you were quite wealthy and then that you wouldn't necessarily have all the space for unless you had a workshop area. Mm -hmm. So it's a really cool concept, but this one in particular, not only did they have the tools, but they would also have free classes on Mm -hmm whatever you could imagine because they're all makers and they're not necessarily all making in the same kind of medium so i remember they were you know like needle like needle point things like felt something i can't remember but like also i did a class on uh spinning up raspberry pi operating you mm-hmm. know uh, little computers basically for doing diy coding and robotics projects That's and like cool. but they have classes and you can just come and attend and learn how to do something new and build something new and you know make useful things for yourself so tool libraries maker spaces whatever you want to call them whatever they might be That's called cool. in your area look it up and especially if you want to start learning how to do carpentry on the weekends or something you can go to these places and they'll have mm-hmm. experts there to help you learn how to use the tools and yeah. then you're kind of That's off cool. on your own and you can get better at whatever it is that you want to learn oh, so many options so <laughs> so many overwhelming options. and now i'm like oh, i do teach myself so you just go back and forth <laughs> you know when i can't sleep at night or when i'm bored or whatever it is i just i usually turn to some sort of resource like that list you mean that like when had. you sent me like a six minute video of how a car engine worked yeah transmissions or- do you have any final thoughts on uh self-teaching self-learning no, I think autodidacticism it's, um 
have a problem with that word. But other than that, you just don't like saying it. Autodidacticism. Um, <laughs> it feels like a lot. It's a many. It feels syllables. like a lot for saying self-taught. <laughs> uh, no, I mean it's Greek. It's just you gotta get those Greek roots in there. Anyway, mm-hmm. go I'll ahead, pull those right out. No, I mean I think this is probably more important than what I've paid with any mind for sure. But it's also because I don't. I don't look at something and I'm like, oh, I'm going to fulfill this, you know, like self-learning. Like I learn it because I'm in the need of it. Mm -hmm. But I'm also a person that like when I have time off, I truly cannot make a decision about what I want to do. I am Mm. so bad at that. Downtime. Like when I have downtime, I cannot make a decision. I'm like, would I be happy doing five things? Yes. Do I want to do one of them more than another? No. So I think that's why sometimes I feel like I'm probably not teaching myself as much as I as I could be. And it's mostly just because when I do have time, I just sit there because I don't know what to do with the time. Isn't that ridiculous? Yeah, I think that's the too much choice danger. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. Because what could we watch on TV? We had a whole list all yeah. break and I still couldn't make a decision. We already made a list. Mm-hmm. Like that was supposed to be helpful. And I was still like, I'm overwhelmed, you know? Uh-huh. So I definitely get that way. Um, so the you things get you were talking about, about your relaxation. Yeah. Well, yeah, and like that's when I would do this, right? Uh-huh. Like, so I hope that I can I can find a way to be more not useful in my downtime, but to make it what I want it. And I think mm-hmm. it's just because I'm like I'm happy to do a lot of things. Yeah, and I don't feel strongly about one thing. That's really the problem in mm-hmm. my life. Mm-hmm. So this interesting. is interesting because as you were talking about all these things, I was like, that would be fun. That would be fun. Yeah, that would be fun. But did I ever feel called to do one of them? No. But they all sound fun. Mm-hmm. I think my that's um, the choice issue. Yes, that is the choice issue. I think my parting thought might be that, and we were talking about this, there's a very fuzzy line between self-teaching and then being, you know, benefiting from the knowledge and mastery of others. And I would say that even though I'm a self-taught web developer, I still wouldn't be where I am today without the help of a few peers along the way who helped me or, you know, helped me spin up my business and my clients and my tech stacks and like Mm -hmm. just all of this stuff. I definitely had friends and acquaintances along the way who I could ask questions of, you know, just all this sort of stuff. Somebody where I could be like, hey, I'm totally frustrated. I mean, Discord communities are actually good for the Sioux. We talked Mm -hmm. about Discord in our last episode a lot, but those those are sometimes good communities where you can just pop in and be like, hey, I need an an expert in this. On this thing. Please help me. Forums exist for that sort of stuff. Yeah, and I found like Facebook groups too that do a lot of that kind of thing. So Actually surrounding a podcast that I love. Yeah. I think there's a lot of, it does exist, Mm -hmm. right? Like, Mm -hmm. and one of the things I think of, one of the groups I'm in is is a group for teachers. And it's funny because a lot of times in that group, They'll be like, can someone look at my Facebook page? I want to know what the public can see. So it's really cool because it's a chance for us to interact. Yeah, to be like, I've got these issues at school. Can someone please make sure my stuff is locked down? Mm -hmm. So it's been kind of neat because it's been a way to learn about that kind of thing, but also give input to people when I've gone through it. Sure, sure. I think there's a lot of neat communities out there. I just don't always look at them in this way, but they Mm -hmm. really are. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no reason that they're, they're not. But yeah, maybe just part of my goal is to figure out what I want to do. Yeah. And I think that the other thing that I would say, in addition to you're always being helped by the people around you, no matter what you do, I I think the other thing is just like, it can be dangerous to set unrealistic goals for yourself. You might think that if you're learning something, success needs to look like what success looks Mm -hmm. like in formal education Mm -hmm. settings, but it often does not. Mm -hmm. So just, you know... Well, this beating podcast, up on yourself can make you not want to do this things, podcast so. is an example of one of these things uh-huh. right how long did we talk about it before we ever did it i mean we recorded an episode and didn't release it for like four months i think it was like a year i think from start to finish yes but like i'm saying year. by the time we recorded an yeah. episode it was over four months old yeah, yeah yeah and i would have never done it had you not been like we're doing it and it wasn't because i didn't want to do it it's just because i don't have somewhere in me there's like not a go switch mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. I, don't, I just don't you know my so, go switch is stuck on right and <laughs> truly yours is and i just watch you like tasmanian devil around the place and i'm just standing here like oh dear god so <laughs> and it's not because i don't want to do any of this stuff it's just because i don't ever feel strongly enough yeah i think our brains way. just work differently about things sometimes and that's totally fine Okay. Cool. So, right. 
Are we ready to move on to fill in the blank? I think so. Okay. Do we do last episode? Why don't you go for it? Okay. So last episode's question, the co-founder and former CEO of Twitter. Oh, this was like days after that was over. Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay. So co-founder and former CEO of Twitter, Jack Dorsey, was the first person ever to tweet what it said, quote, just setting up my Twitter on March 21st, 2006. This tweet was sold as an NFT in 2021 to a Malaysian based businessman. How much was the first ever tweet sold for? 2.9 2.9 million US dollars. Oh my gosh. To own a printout of a tweet. Just to have to say at a party someday. <laughs> guess what I am. Okay. This episode's question? Yeah. You want to read it? Yeah. Yeah. You still going through it? Uh, oh, I did want to say one thing about that. I misremembered that old Twitter logo. We did. We remember because we, we went and looked it up. Yeah, we combined mm-hmm. two old Twitter logos. Mm-hmm. So we combined like the light blue one and the bubble letter one, which is yes. like green. I think we ended it up finding was, out. Yeah. It looked like green slime, kind of. But it, that was the bubbles, that was and the, the bubbles. light blue was the bird. Right. And right. we had them switched. I, well, I remember the cartoon looking bird, and I do. Yeah, I remember the bubbles, but I thought they were blue. Me too. So. I thought they were blue. So we we fooled ourselves yeah. into the imagining Mandela a Twitter effect, logo that is. never existed. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. But anyway. All right, this episode's question. This episode of this podcast that we're recording right now is releasing on January 6th, 2022, on the anniversary of Maria Montessori opening her first school. In what year did the first Montessori school open? What year? And if you want some more information on Montessori schools, check out episode 14 of 16 to 1. Okay, well, I thought that was a little bit more sly than you made it, but no, never mind. No, don't, I don't do sly. <laughs> you don't, that's true. I don't have no, subtle, I that was cool, a subtle switch. I just, no, I thought that was cool because a lot of times what I'm doing is I'm just like looking at the date and I'm just looking for something that like roughly connects. And it was like the third thing on that date in history. So I was huh. like, oh, this is good. So, and I actually really like that episode. Relevant. It was really fun to talk about. And timely. So... Neat. Okay. So this episode, we're not doing what we learned. We're just going to talk about some focuses in the theme of this I did um, not learn episode. much, to be quite honest. Well. I, either. I, no. I mean, meaning I I needed to give myself some break time and shut off my brain over Christmas break. I agree. And I think maybe you did too, taking a couple weeks off it turned school. Out, yeah. It turned out that, well, I mean, this is maybe another tip for self-learners, but having downtime is also very important. You can't just go, go, go with your brain all the time and expect it to keep yeah. retaining information, mm-hmm. you know? So I basically turned off my brain for two weeks That's for the holidays okay. and it was great. Everyone deserves that. Yeah, I needed it. So anyway, yes, we're not doing what we learned. We're going to talk about Kind of what, our, what we're focusing on mm-hmm. for this upcoming year in a general way. Cool. Do you want to do you want to go first? Or? Yeah, I'll go. Um, something that Chelsea and I have decided to do is New York Times crossword each day. Yeah. We're not very good at it yet. We're getting better. Yeah. It's hard. Well, they have their own like lingo. I have to learn the the way that they're asking questions. Yes. That's the hard part. So we're doing that. It has but its, its own been... dialect. Kind yeah, of. it has. Yeah. <laughs> But it's been interesting, and I've enjoyed it. And it's always been something that I'm like, I want to be a person who does crosswords, and now I am. Yeah, I enjoy crosswords. I always want to say that I'm I want to read more. Yeah, me too. Because I'm always just reading what's in my class, Mm -hmm. and so I read a lot. But it's just not what I want to be reading. Not necessarily. I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean it's not like leisure. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping to focus on that. I'm trying to figure my life out. But honestly, I'm just trying to like again survive. I yeah. don't want to be like that simple about it, but I will say that the past, this little break and this Christmas break was much needed. I mean, I could use a snow day already, but I think it's, I think you're right. I think I just needed some real decompress. Like I just needed to not think mm-hmm. and I get, especially me personally, I get very wrapped up very quickly. Yeah. So it was just good for me. Yeah. So I'm happy. Cool. What about you? Great. Yeah. You've got uh, fun stuff. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. I'm excited for this so, personally because I will benefit. So Kate and I play <laughs> D&D Dungeons and Dragons with a group of friends in Maryland. Um, sometimes we play online and sometimes we go there. But we've been playing for and this campaign's been going on for like, what, three or four years or something at this point now. Mm-hmm. So it's been a long game. But Kate and I are both involved in this game. So we play a lot and we have friends here and we were talking with them about it. And they're like, can we do a campaign? So I'm going to be doing a homebrew D&D campaign. I'm excited. Which is really fun because it will also give me an opportunity to focus on something sort of in my professional life, which I've been trying to do for a while, which is to turn... And do some more self-teaching. Yeah, do some more (laughs) self-teaching. I want to turn a side project into a 
real adult mm-hmm. project. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm working on an app for nerds like me who need to manage uh, character they're, sheets they're and D&D details. Characters. They're D&D stuff. It's very cool. Characters and campaigns and all of this stuff. So I actually use my own app as my character sheet now for this other campaign that we're in. But I'm going to use the fact that I'm running, going to be running a D&D campaign as an opportunity to learn what DMs need for, you know, mm-hmm. dungeon masters, game masters. Yeah. What, what they people actually who are in charge it. of the campaigns. Yeah. What you need to run it. And that's going to help me inform how I make my app better. Which is kind of a cool cycle. Yeah. To go from player to then to being in charge to be like, okay, what, where yeah. is it? What's it not do? I'm going to be learning a lot both on the D&D side and on the app development side because it's, I don't really know D&D all that well but i do know creating worlds and Mm -hmm. environments and coming up with things and improvising and all of that stuff that makes DD really fun like the storytelling aspect of it i'm fairly confident in Mm -hmm. because i can bullshit with the best of them you know like i can can. make things up on the go and i'm really looking forward to it and the group of players that we're going to be hanging out with are going to be fun and i'm really looking forward to that so That's what I've kind of got on my immediate yeah. docket for 2022. Um, but yeah. So last few things. Go get that booster. Yeah. Or your first round or your second. Whatever you need. Just go get that. Maybe a flu shot. It's not too late. Take care of yourself. We also just had a couple of recommendations of things that we watched over break that mm-hmm. we enjoyed. And so we watched the Harry Potter reunion, which was magical and special and felt so good to watch. Mm-hmm. We watched Luca, which is a Disney Pixar movie. It was beautiful. It's very cute. We cried. Yeah. We watched Encanto. I just cry at all Pixar movies That's true. Now. It's just a rule. I just cry at Pixar movies. So. We watched Encanto, which mm-hmm. is a new Disney movie. Mm-hmm. It was beautiful as well. Yep. We started the new Sex and the City TV show. Can you tell that we did nothing over break? Yeah. And I really <laughs> enjoy the new Sex and the City. As yeah. a Sex and the City fan, it's good. It feels it feels fine. Yeah, I never not really watched the original in a dedicated way, but it, it, it's... It's, it's cute. Good, I like it. It's it's very well done yeah. so far. Yeah. Um. And then we also started Boba Fett, which is the new. It's not a spinoff of the Mandalorian. I mean, he's his own character, but he was also featured in the Mandalorian. Uh, there is maybe two episodes out at this point, but it's beautiful and it's more Lucasfilm's Disney success. And um, that was really what we did over break, and it was wonderful. Yeah. So it was great to do nothing. Played a lot of games. Yeah, it was watched good. a lot of TV. It was, it was just we needed it. We needed it. So we sure did. Make sure you're getting a restful, recharged start to your 2022. Take care of yourself. Yeah, take care of yourself. Don't forget we're having Risha and on. And we'll see you in episode, episode 50. Episode 50. It's like our half centennial. What do you call that? Yep. Our that. 50th birthday. Anyway. All right. All right. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thanks for supporting 16 to 1. We're trying to grow our audience, so please check us out at 16to1.com, all spelled out, and tell your friends about the show. On our website, you can find links to follow us on social media, an archive of all our old episodes, and a contact form where you can get in touch. Thanks again for listening, and we'll catch you next show. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get smashed to bits.